how, in fact, did cannabis, cannabis get Ill illegal here in California? It was actually sort of a byproduct of this war on opium. Um, uh, there, okay, uh, slide please. As we know, 100 years ago, there really wasn't a cannabis problem here in California. It was out there in the pharmacies and the, if you buy hashish and so forth, and we were growing hemp in the Central Valley. The one thing that nobody had heard of at the time was marijuana. That was no, maybe in a tiny minority of Mexicans knew about it, but marijuana was not in the public mind in 1913. However, next slide, it got the attention of a very important group of people, individuals here in California. The California State Board of Pharmacy basically pioneered the war on drugs here in California before the federal law could get passed because the states had more constitutional freedom to do so. And uh, California had been a pioneer in this because we'd started uh, going after opium dens here in San Francisco as early as 1875, which is the first anti-narcotics law in the U.S. The Board of Pharmacy engineered a state law making it illegal basically to sell opium, morphine, or cocaine uh, in pharmacies in 1907, and they proceeded to launch an aggressive campaign against opium dens and dope dealing pharmacists and so forth. It was led by a singular figure named Henry James Finger, who's really the father of cannabis prohibition here in California. He was a pharmacist from Santa Barbara, and his efforts uh, in pioneering the war on drugs here got favorable attention from President Taft, and he was appointed, along with our good friend Hamilton Wright, to the Hague Anti-Opium Conference in 1910. And it is then that we first hear on the next slide about a possible cannabis problem here in California. This comes from a private letter in the National Archives that Henry Finger wrote to Hamilton right before the conference. And he says, within the last year in California, we've been getting a large influx of Hindus. And they have, in turn, started quite a demand for cannabis indica. And well, the fear is that it will not be confined to Hindus alone, but they are initiating our fights into this habit. Now, a word about the Hindus. Oh, well, uh, there, as you can see, that's a cartoon from the San Francisco exam. The Hindus were very unpopular. They were a very small minority. They weren't really Hindus, actually. They were Sikhs. But nowhere have I been able to find in any of the uh, newspapers or literature about the Sikhs or Hindus in California at this time, is there any mention at all about cannabis? The only person who ever brought it up was Henry Finger in this private letter to Hamilton Wright. However, Hamilton Wright, there he is, uh, took interest in it because he had similar ideas. He said, well, you know, it occurred to me that if, in fact, we do succeed in stamping out opium and morphine and cocaine, the fiends might turn to Indian hemp. Therefore, it's a good idea to pass a law to prevent this. And he urged Finger to see to it that California passed such a law. By the way, both of them together went to the Hague Conference and tried to get cannabis made illegal under international law, but nobody was interested in that. Nonetheless, as we see in the next slide, Finger was able to come back and get the California, working with the California board, managed to get quietly get an amendment passed to the California Poison Act, outlawing the possession of hemp drugs. Um, this, this was the 1913 law. Now, this was a very obscure law at the time. There is absolutely no mention of it anywhere in the press. I have not seen a single article about it at the time. This was a behind the scenes deal by drug enforcement bureaucrats, basically. The first law was rather sloppy and had to be amended and uh, was amended many times and penalties were made stiffer as time went on. Um, but uh, if I turn to the next page, uh, after, it's after the law, cannabis is made illegal that we first hear about marijuana in California. <coughs> and that happens when the California Board of Pharmacy stages what is the first known marijuana raid in the entire United States in Los Angeles, in the Sonora Town Mexican neighborhood in 1914. Apparently there were some Mexicans growing some pot there. And as you see, there's the story from the LA Times, wagon load of dreams seized. 
uh, and they spelled marijuana funny back in those days because nobody had heard of it. Uh, so then you start seeing stories in the press about the marijuana busts, mainly in Southern California. Uh, there weren't a lot of them. This wasn't a big deal. Marijuana wasn't even seen in Northern California until the 1920s but it gradually started to spread and catch on during alcohol prohibition in subsequent <coughs> years, spread out of the Mexican community, and became rather popular, and usage started to increase, even though penalties had been jacked up to felonies. Turn to the next page. Now we can see here the toll of this war on cannabis. Um, these are, ooh, this is coming through very badly. These are the number of marijuana arrests in California from official statistics. Uh, they don't go back before 1916 um, because basically there were, they didn't keep statistics then and there were only a handful of arrests. But you can see how the arrests shot up in the 60s and 70s. And by 1974, we had over 100,000 arrests for marijuana here in California. These were felony arrests. Well, this was causing so much trouble because it's the costs on this criminal justice system that the legislature led by Senator Moscone and a guest we will have shortly, uh, uh, decided to decriminalize marijuana, making it a misdemeanor to, to possess. And you see, right after that law is passed, you see an abrupt fall in the amount of marijuana arrests. And most of the arrests that happen after that are, in fact, misdemeanors, which it is now misdemeanor possession. Uh, uh, and uh, felonies are only for, for transportation, commercial stuff, uh, cultivation. Uh, well, you see, things have gone along sort of up and down ever since then. Prop 215 in 1996, they had no impact on the number of marijuana arrests here, but we did have a decriminalization law passed a couple years ago, which turned the misdemeanors into infractions. So you know, at the, the very end of the graph here, you see a precipitous drop in the number of misdemeanor arrests because they no longer reported their infractions. Nonetheless, the felonies are going on like they have pretty much for 40 years, and that's where the costs of marijuana enforcement are. So if we can conclude at the last slide, cannabis prohibition is a crime creation program that is created by law enforcement, the California Board of Pharmacy. This doesn't have to do with reefer madness or the Hearst Press or anything like that. This was the cops coming up with crime. We've had over 2 million arrests for 2,600,000 2, arrests thousand arrests since 1913, and in this same time, the number of users has gone from practically none to over three million. So you see, the cannabis was popularized after the law that was intended to prevent it, the law that Hamilton Wright and uh, Henry James Finger tried to pass. So here we are, 100 years of prohibition. We have a lot of experience with this. This law is a failed and bankrupt law. Time to change it. Thank you. Um, I, I, I believe Michael had a comment he wanted to make. Now it's coming to fruition. Yesterday I opened <laughs> my newspaper, the Los Angeles Times, and found an editorial there, which I will quote from. It is astonishing, because it's the message I've been trying to get out. It's one reason I wrote this book, and here it is finally. Uh, not an op-ed from some left-wing nut like me, but it is the editorial board of the Los Angeles Times, Reefer Madness at the DEA. It says here, uh, okay, basically what, he's, what they're saying is the message we've been trying to get out, which is there, it's a catch-22. The DEA says you ca you've got to have it FDA approved or else and they won't give us the marijuana that you can do the research with and you can't buy it from your kid because that's not how you do research. So w they peg that right here. They say this is an outrage and it needs to be adjusted immediately. So it's finally hit the, front, the, the last page of the LA Times. Thank you very much. Very oh, one, 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 I forgot the punchline. We, we've been agitating now. This is the moment Obama needs to really hear from us. It's time for us to get in the goddamn streets. And as FDR said, when, when confronted with the impasse of Social Security, he said, make me do it. And if we think Obama is going to lead this parade, if we're expecting him to get out in front of us and carry the flag, huh, we're going to have a long wait. He wants us to demand it, and we've got to do that. 
Oh, okay, uh, could the next panelists come up here?